competition is definitely part of human nature too. And it has a really necessary role, not just in human society, but in nature as well. Nature is full of competition, often very brutal. But that competition has to be understood as part of a larger coherency. So, for example, weeds, they headlong compete for sunlight and soil space and water on a denuded patch of land. By doing so, they fulfill an important service that, that, that they hold down the soil, they prevent erosion, they allow uh, rain to soak in instead of running off. They're doing something really important for the land through their competition, through their headlong rush to cover ground. So in the human realm, I think the proper role of competition, it's, it's a way to discover and refine your gifts. So like in the car, we were talking about track and field, you know, and I was a distance runner. So maybe and at the beginning, I thought I wanted to be a sprinter. Well, competition quickly showed me that I was not going to be a sprinter. And I learned then that my true gift was something else. And I was able to develop that gift through competition. So I'm not saying competition is a bad thing. However, we live in a situation that intensifies the competitive urge that it's, I mean, of course it's there. We wouldn't see all this competition if it weren't some part of human nature. But the system we have now amplifies that competition and suppresses other ways of interacting, especially in the economic realm. Yeah, so I'm not like trying to pretend that competition will go away or that it doesn't exist in nature or that, you know, 99 out of 100 tadpoles die before they reach froghood. Those aspects of life are part of the matrix too. But we do not need to live in a system that amplifies the competition and suppresses everything else. The reason that we have, that, that we see the world as being primarily about competition is that we live in, I think it's primarily a money system, but also an educational system. Like when you age segregate kids and condition their rewards and their success on outperforming their peers, you're going to have competition that's training for it's training for the economy where there's a limited amount of reward artificially limited because of the debt-based money creation system so of course you have competition we don't have to have a system like that we could have other money systems that don't subject us to a world in which there's always more debt than there is money that's a recipe for competition. It's like a game of musical chairs. You know, you, you, this is the uh, metaphor I use to, to explain the money system. You know, imagine that you're with a thousand people and you're playing a gigantic game of musical chairs, maybe with a thousand people and 950 chairs. And whoever doesn't get a chair, you're out of the game. And to make it interesting, let's also say that your kids have to go hungry and you lose your house, and you're out in the street if you lose this round of musical chairs. So the music stops, everybody scrambles for a chair, and you know, like, I'm a nice guy, but man, my kid's gotta eat, you know. Oh, I'm gonna elbow you out of the way, you know, push that, that, that woman over there, and I got my chair. And everybody's doing that, except for a few altruistic individuals who give up their chair and suffer the consequences and they're out on the street. So that's the, that's the situation. And then I imagine like outside the circle, there's, there's the economist and there's the biologist and there's the politician and the priest. And the economist says, look at them, human nature competing for, to maximize rational self-interest. Everyone's out for themselves. The biologist says, yup, it's genetically programmed. And the politician says, look at that behavior. 
lucky thing to have me around to impose some limits on how much they can push and shove each other. And the priest says, I'm going to go and try to make them be better people. And he goes in and tries to convince them to be a little bit more gentle and to let someone else have the chair. Well, and, but they all think that they're looking at human nature. But is that human nature? Or is it a consequence of the rules of the game? What would it look like if you had a thousand people on a thousand chairs? Then you might still have some competition. But you'd also have, <clears throat> like maybe, yeah, maybe all the chairs are a little bit different and, and I am skinny and I like a soft chair and they like a hard chair and I'm like, we, we might still have a lot of trade and negotiation and, and exchange, but it wouldn't have competition built into it. And sometimes we might compete for a chair that we both really like. And, and like, there's still some messiness, but it's not like this, this tide, this current of competition against which we have to swim in order to cooperate or be nice to each other. So essentially, the economic system, the money system, is like a game of musical chairs, where a certain amount of money is created through debt and there's interest on that debt. So there's, everyone is competing to acquire enough money to pay the debts. And of course, it's a bit more complicated than this, but essentially all the money is created as debt. There's always more debt than there is money. So we have a, a, a climate of competition, a, a necessity for competition built into the system. And there's more to the story than that. But that's how, so the question isn't really, is competition human nature? It's how do we create conditions or what conditions do we want to create to bring forth certain aspects of human nature? What kind of society do we want? If we only attack the response to the conditions, like the priest going in there and attacking greed and making people feel guilty for for shoving that old lady out of the way to get the chair, then nothing's gonna change.